Hello and welcome to my GetResponse newsletter tutorial, where in other words, you're going to see how to send emails with GetResponse. It's very easy to do. If you'd like to follow along, I will put a link in the description. And if you click that, you can actually get a free account with GetResponse. So I got a brand spanking new account here, so you can actually follow along if that's going to be your plan. What you're going to want to do is go to the email marketing tab up top. Once you get there, click on create newsletter. So here we're going to go through the steps. The first section right here where it says untitled message, it also says the name will appear on the list of messages. Only you will see that. So that's very important. You just want to give this a name that's so you know exactly what you're talking about in case you want to go back to it, read it, open it, you know, check it out. Maybe add some grammar details. Maybe you want to optimize it for later. But what you can also do is just make it similar to the subject line if you want. That'll make your life easier when matching it up. Normally, this is going to have your name and email address in it naturally so that's going to be good so then we have our subject line you know i'll do a different video when it comes to subject lines getting people to open up the email from you whatever it's going to be but give me a second and i'm going to just put in a subject line here and we'll go from there all right so here we have the case against email marketing just giving you a tip right here this is a really good subject line if you want to use this as a template the case against and you put the main topic right here because think about it if you were if you had a list where people were interested in email marketing and all you do is talk about it and then you hit them with the subject line that says the case against it, it's kind of saying like it's really bad. And the cool thing about it is when you do the email, you can frame it in a way to say like ways email marketing isn't going to work, but it's more so talked about like reasons why people will fail with it. So for example, in that email I talk about, yeah, email marketing is great, but if you don't email your list, a lot of times people are going to forget who you are. They could hit the spam button. They can un subscribe you know obviously you're not going to make any revenue if you're not sending emails and so on and so forth so you can talk about a lot of the pitfalls but it's nicely stated when it comes to uh, the case against in the subject line so also like i talked about before since we know our actual subject line we could just call it this okay remember we can only see that moving on we can do preview text as well it says, add a brief, catchy summary to encourage people to open your email. It will follow the subject line in your recipient's inbox. So this is something you can add a little bit more. So in case your subject line wasn't you know, catchy enough, you can say something like, give me a sec. Okay, so just when you thought email marketing was the best, dot, dot, dot. It's kind of like a cliffhanger. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, there are some pitfalls, okay? So that's how that would actually work. You're not, you know, saying the case against email marketing. You're talking more about what the pitfalls can happen, some of the errors people make. Recipients is pretty simple. What I did is uh, create a segmentation, which I'll do a separate video on. Like I said, this is a brand new account, so there's not uh, 500,000 people on here. But what you would do is click on add recipients and then choose the list that you would like to send it to. I'm just going to use my recipient of me. I created a separate list and put me on it. So there we go. Like I said, it's a testing segmentation. I'm on there. So like I can send an email to myself, given the fact that this is a test. Okay. So now we get to the fun part when it comes down to the design and content, as it says, start with a template or reuse content from your existing message, adjust your text and off you go. You can also use the HTML editor or start with a blank layout. Let's click on design message. And there are going to be plenty of templates that you can utilize. But in my opinion, from all the email marketing I've done, I always prefer blank templates. I understand that some companies are going to want to use some pictures, some branding, like a lot of these look great. But in my experience, the less pictures you have, the less chances you have of ending up in the sin bin. Sin bin is just another way of saying the spam box. So I go with um, blank templates right here, and then I go completely blank. That's what I like to use. So there's no use in previewing it because it's blank. But let's use this one for this example. All right, so there we go. We have our start with layout, drag and drop block. So here we're just looking at text. So this is the block to add text to your message. So it's, you know, this is where your email is going to go. Give me a second and I'm just going to randomly put in some words and so on and so forth. All right, so here is the random email that I came up with. I said, so you think that email marketing is the bee's knees, huh? Well, allow me to tell you about the case against email marketing. Let me change that real quick. I put of good to go. Email marketing is only as powerful as the individual sending emails. It's the truth. After all, you can't just send random emails and cross your fingers. What about if you'd never send out any emails? What about if you end up sending way too many emails? What about if you spend too much money hiring email copywriters? I'm sure that you can see how the pitfalls can add up. Luckily, though, I'll be showing you how to avoid these pitfalls. Be sure to check out my next email for all the important information. Keep in mind, this is just something that I came up with off the top of my head. It's less about writing the email and more about how we send it. Okay, so what we can also do is test and preview if we like. 
So if we go here, we can do send test message. We can preview. We can also do an inbox preview, but let's do preview here. And I don't know about you. I love simple emails like that. Uh, I, it's not like it has to be shorter or longer, but it's just easier to digest. If you have a link there, it's probably not going to be too difficult to click. It would probably be around there, obviously, depending on the context, but that's going to be desktop. This is going to be mobile anyway, but that's uh, desktop and mobile. Let's go back to layout. What we can also do test and preview, we can do these spam check. So look at that. There's little chance your message will land in the spam folder. You can still check the details below to see if there's anything to improve or you can send away. And pretty much we look good. You wanna keep away from a lot of the trigger words. I can do a separate video about that. There's a lot of them like congratulations and free and credit card and stuff like that, that a lot of spammers tend to use. So overall, they have a higher chance of getting flagged, okay? So once once again, that's just another reason why I like using the blank templates, no pictures along with, you know, make sure you're not using any of those spam trigger words. And you're gonna get a lot more inboxes compared to having Gmail or Yahoo or AOL being like, I've seen this congratulations and the credit card words too many times going into this in bin. Okay. From there, if we want, we can click on or hover over save and exit. You can do save as my template. So if you want your emails to look like this, you can create a template and this kind of delete everything, or you can do save draft and exit, but we're just going to click on next. So there we go. That's the design and content. That's pretty much the meat and potatoes when it comes to creating your email. Like I talked about before, you can also do sending a test message if you want to see how it looks. Now we move on to the tracking aspect. I definitely recommend that. It says track the click through rate on this message to see which contacts clicked your links. This will help you estimate engagement. E-commerce is going to be something if you upgrade. I don't personally need e-commerce for this. Then of course you can track link clicks with Google Analytics if you want. It says track traffic from your campaign to your site. Note you need to have Google Analytics configured on your site to the, use this feature. Sharing is going to be like Facebook and Twitter if you want to share it there. Then, of course, when we have our sending, we can do immediately. We can do schedule for later or perfect timing if you have one of the upgraded accounts. But just for example, let's say we want to send immediately. Let's click on send message and that's going to do it. So it says, great job. We'll send your message in, you know, 52, 51, and then so on and so forth. What do you want to do next? Send another email, see message opens live. You know, it's really going to be up to you. But all in all, that concludes the get response newsletter tutorial. That's how you can send emails with get response when it comes to doing broadcast and sending them to a specific list or segmentation. I will do separate um, videos on that when it comes to showing you how to create a segmentation. But that's about it. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Hope that was helpful. I hope it was uh, simple enough and slow enough where you can digest everything and then figure it out on your own. And of course, if you haven't gotten to try out GetResponse, I will put that link in the description where you can get a free account. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in my next video.